With a height of over 22,000 feet above sea level, Huascaran was considered the tutelary god of the Ancash people. The majesty and power of Huascaran made the people feel safe and secure. However, on May 31, 1970, it unleashed the worst earthquake and subsequent avalanche in history south of the Rio Grande, unleashing a catastrophe that was more destructive than protective. The glaciers in the Cordillera Blanca have been the site of numerous calamities. During the late afternoon of May 31, 1970, a huge earthquake struck off the coast of Peru. Combined with the resulting landslide, the Ancash earthquake, also known as the Great Peruvian Earthquake, is the most catastrophic natural disaster in Peruvian history. Moreover, this disaster ranks among the deadliest avalanche or glacier-related catastrophes in history and among the most deadly landslide disasters of the 20th century. As we watch this video, we'll be trying to get a sense of what happened five decades ago in northeastern Peru when the 1970 Ancash earthquake caused the destruction of several villages. As the avalanche originated from the north peak of Huascaran, it had been considered unstable since 1962, when a smaller collapse wiped out several villages in the Callejón de Huaylas Valley near Yungay. Meanwhile, the provincial government did everything it could to prevent the report from spreading and urged people not to panic. A glacier and snow mass thawed rapidly after the 1970 earthquake causing mud flows as a large volume of loose dirt, rock, and surface water accumulated. As a result of the earthquake occurring on a Sunday, the death toll was made worse as thousands more people were in Yungay for the market when the mud flow struck and leveled the city. Impact of the Disaster Approximately 15 miles west of Chimbote, a fishing port in the department of Ancash, north-central Peru, was the epicenter of the earthquake under the Pacific Ocean. The quake occurred at about 3.20 p.m. local time and had a magnitude of 7.9. It caused serious damage across an area of about 13,500 square miles in the Yancash and La Libertad regions. Its effects were felt as far south as Chiclayo, 400 miles from Lima, the nation's capital city. Around 32,000 square miles were affected by the earthquake, an area larger than Belgium and Netherlands combined in the Ancash region and Sierra highlands of the southern part of La Libertad region. Damage and casualties have been reported from Tumbes to Pisco and Iquitos on the east. The situation in Ecuador appeared to have been chaotic in some areas. Brazil's western and central regions experienced tremors as well. Damage caused by the disaster The most significant damage occurred in the coastal towns and inland in the Quillejón de Huaylas as the valley of the Rio Santa is known where it separates the Cordillera Blanca from the Cordillera Negra. Due to the construction methods in the area, much of the destruction was exasperated. These included many homes, businesses, such as the power company which used to stand on the site, and buildings constructed of adobe built on unstable soil. Some 70,000 people were killed. Juarez, the largest city in the Santa Valley, lost over half its residents, nearly 20,000 people, and about 90% of it was destroyed. Fortunately, none of the mountain porters living in Juarez, who are mostly from the Cordillera Blanca, were killed when the highly unstable adobe brick houses collapsed. Houses made from these sun-baked clay and straw bricks with tile roofs supported by wooden beams are not earthquake-resistant in any way. Villages like Huaraz, which suffered a 90% destruction rate, were built on deep, poorly compacted alluvial deposits with high water tables, which amplify the shaking. In the beginning, there were slight tremors, followed by hard shaking for more or less a minute. The movements were pronounced from side to side. About 15 seconds into the hard shaking, buildings began to collapse. Nearly one million people became homeless in the entire region. A lot of people were injured and killed by rocks falling from steep slopes. Strong tremors continued in the region for weeks. On the 93-mile epicenter radius, many areas such as Huaraz, Caraz, and Aika, located in the Andean area of Ancash, were partially destroyed. Others, including Trujillo, the third largest city in Peru, and Chimbote and Casma, were seriously damaged. A total of 75% of Chimbote's homes were destroyed, as well as 96% of its adobe homes. The death toll surpassed 1,000. Nonetheless, 
The Santa Valley in the Andes had already suffered eight avalanches in the previous 30 years, resulting in the worst damage. Ranrajica, for example, experienced these events in 1962, resulting in the death of 4,000 people. The 1970 earthquake that devastated the areas of Ancash and southern La Libertad caused a large glacial drift that destroyed the town of Yungay in the Huaylas Corridor. In the Huascaran, a mass of ice between 16,400 and 19,600 feet above sea level tumbled down 6.2 miles. Within three minutes, Yungay and Ranrajica were buried under the avalanche. All that remained of Yungay was a statue of Christ in the town cemetery and four palm trees. 20,000 people were killed in nearby Ranrajica, leaving only 400 survivors. Ranrajica had been decimated several times before. Eight years earlier, 2,000 people had been killed in a similar landslide that also left seven more nearby towns devastated. But the great Peruvian earthquake in 1970 eclipsed that of 1962. In Yungay, 17,000 died under the ice. Many of them had been evacuated to the church of Yungay. There were only 400 survivors, including Mateo Casaverde, a geophysicist and faculty member of the School of Civil Defense at Trujillo National University and an advisor to the National Civil Defense Institute. The avalanche swept up the slopes of the opposite side of the Santa Valley to a height of 272 feet. A total of three layers of 32 feet thick soil and sand covered an area of three square miles. The overall volume of ice and earth that fell was estimated to be between 50 and 100 million tons. While Yungay was not directly in the avalanche path, the slide was so large that it exceeded the national geographic barriers that protected the town, whose location had previously been deemed safe. Aftermath Outsiders didn't realize the scale of the disaster for two days, leaving survivors to pick their way through the rubble with bare hands. After rescue crews arrived with heavy equipment and medical supplies, it was too late for those who had been buried alive and for many survivors who had already succumbed to their injuries. As a result of this widespread disaster, the infrastructure of regional communication, commerce, and transportation was destroyed. More than half a billion U.S. dollars was lost. Cities, towns, villages, as well as homes, industries, public buildings, schools, electrical generation and distribution systems, and water, sanitation, and communication systems were damaged seriously or were destroyed completely. In this case, the only foreign victims of the avalanche were Czechoslovak mountaineers whose mountaineering team was at the wrong place at the wrong time. There was no sign of their bodies. It was stated that, conceivably, such an event may not occur again for thousands of years by the United States Geological Survey. Government officials have prohibited excavations in the area where the town of Yungay is buried and declared it a national cemetery. A number of the children who survived in the local stadium were resettled in other countries. The disaster led to the government declaring May 31st Natural Disaster Education and Reflection Day. In commemoration of this disaster, many Peruvian schools practice an earthquake drill every May 31st. To this day, the Great Peruvian Earthquake and subsequent avalanche is considered one of the world's most destructive quakes. It resulted in the deaths of 50,000 people the disappearance of 20,000 others, and the injury of another 150,000 people. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for future contents. Feel free to comment below your thoughts on today's video. We'd love to hear what disaster you would like us to cover next. Stay tuned for the next one!